Kirk Cousins sucks. Kirk Cousins is good, but he's not worth the contract. Yeah, I think Kirk is a solid quarterback, but he'll never win a Super Bowl. Kirk this, Kirk that, and we have heard it all on Minnesota Vikings Pro Bowl quarterback Kirk Cousins, and depending who you are, think he is either extremely underrated or extremely overrated with seldom in between. There's some Vikings fans that think he is one of the best pure passers in the entire NFL, and when he's on, he's up there with the best of them, while there are some other Vikings fans that want him gone and think he is a big waste of money. And in today's video, we're going to discuss everything regarding Kirk Cousins and why 2022 is the most important year of his career, and without further ado, let's begin. And there are plenty of both positives and negatives with Kirk Cousins, so we will start today with the positives. Over the past two years, Kirk has played some of, if not the best football of his career, while his defense time and time again have let him down. In 2020, the defense gave up the 29th most points in the entire NFL, and in 2021, while they did improve, they still gave up the 24th most points in the NFL. The Bucks, Cowboys, and Chiefs defenses this past year were all within the top 10, despite having quarterbacks signed to big money. But Kirk over the past two years has thrown for 68 touchdowns to just 20 interceptions while completing nearly 67% of his passes and has thrown for nearly 8,500 yards. For reference, Justin Herbert, a player perceived as one of the quarterbacks that is the future of the NFL, has thrown for one more touchdown pass and five more interceptions on nearly 200 more passing attempts. And that's not to say Kirk is better than Herbert, because it's not, but it's as much to say look at the difference in perception between the two when Kirk in fact throws touchdowns at a much, much more efficient rate. Anyways, Kirk has also led seven game-winning drives according to Pro Football Reference, and on top of it all, will be, for the first time since becoming the starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings, have a head coach that is an offensive-minded coach and a guy who truly believes in him, which means a great deal. And the majority of my audience that watches my videos are between the ages of 18 and 34, which ironically Kirk Cousins would fall into as well, but the reason I bring that up is... Imagine having an entire city and state on your shoulders and the immense amount of pressure that is to begin with, and then have your head coach, or boss for that matter, not believe in you, which is what Kirk has had over the past four years, and not want to sign you to begin with because of paying a quarterback top dollar. Oh, and by the way, your boss publicly shames you, and you're expected to go to work the next day and be like, hey boss, how you doing? How's the family doing? Like, nothing happened between the two of you. So there's been a lot of stress that we as fans don't see behind closed doors, but was certainly there. And for Kirk now to have a coach he is familiar with in Kevin O'Connell, who is very excited about getting the opportunity to work with Kirk again and help him succeed, rather than say, oh hey, good luck, if it goes well for you, then I'm there to root and cheer on your success, but if you fail, then it's entirely your fault and I want nothing to do with you, is a major, major difference between 2021 and 2022. And by the way, Kirk has succeeded over the past two years. He's had 11 300-yard games and 13 three-passing touchdown games over those two years, compared to just four multi-interception games. And within all of this, there have been some shining moments, like beating the Packers twice in the last two games Kirk has started, and like beating the Chargers in LA, and despite LA not making the playoffs this year, certainly isn't an easy accomplishment for any team. And entering 2022, the supporting cast for Kirk will be arguably the best he's had of any in his career. And within all of this, what has to be remembered is the Vikings schedule is not too terribly difficult this year, combined with the NFC North not being as talented as it has in years past. The Packers in a lot of ways regressed from 2021 to 22, and are coming off of a season where they put up 10 points in a playoff game and traded one of the best receivers in all of football. The Bears are, well, the Bears, and I don't expect them to be much this year. And the Lions did beat the Vikings last year and are going to be a threat this year, there's no denying that. But when looking at the rest of the Vikings 2022 schedule, how many are truly unwinnable? Now, to be clear, I don't think Minnesota's going to win in Buffalo and go in and stun Josh Allen and the Bills, but aside from that, every game for them is winnable. Now, will they is obviously something else. 
and between the Bills game, which is 10 days before Thanksgiving, the Vikings play one road game until January, and it's an in-division game against the Lions in Michigan. This schedule isn't all that difficult compared to what other NFC teams have, like the Bucks, who play the Packers, Chiefs, Ravens, Rams, Bengals, and 49ers, among others. The Vikings, on the other hand, have a six-game span of home against the Cowboys, Patriots, and Jets, at the Lions, then come back home and play the Colts and Giants. Sure, all of those aren't easy, and I'm not trying to say that, but having that type of familiarity and the comfort of being at home is more than what a lot of other teams can say. And how this all wraps into 2022 being the most important year of Kirk's career is these games have to be won. This coach is a guy who went to bat for you and coached you in Washington earlier in your career. There's been times in Kirk's career where teams he's quarterbacked have inexplicably dropped random games, like in 2018 against a rookie Josh Allen who was not good at the time, and like in 2021 when they lost at home to Cooper Rush. And when you hear the narratives surrounding Kirk, you always hear how he beats the teams he should, like the Lions when coached by Matt Patricia, and the Bucks pre-Tom Brady, and whoever. But this team has competed in and with the best teams in the NFL over the past few years, and it's not going to change. And what hindered Kirk Cousins last year that I would be shocked if it was anywhere close in 2022 where it was last year, is the defense ranked 686th out of 686 teams since the year 2000 of allowing touchdowns in the final four minutes of halves. If that doesn't happen last year, this team wins multiple games, including the Ravens and the inexplicable loss to the winless Lions in Detroit, the Arizona Cardinals, and this would have put them in the playoffs. And that was in a year where Kirk was hyper-efficient with a 33-7 TD to INT ratio. There are a couple of things that support Kirk having an even better 2022 than he's had in a couple years past, and as silly as this sounds, it means something in the long run here. Irv Smith will be a fantasy sleeper for everyone in August, I promise, and for good reason. He has less than 70 career catches, but has a lot of talent, and that much is noticeable when you watch him play. But he's coming off of a year in which he missed due to injury, and the last time we saw him play was in 2020, where he had 30 catches for 365 yards and 5 touchdowns. Irv was drafted very young, and will turn just 24 years old in August of this year, and if he has a good season, then there's a chance he signs a 2 or 3 year deal then signs another in a couple of years to maximize his dollar. And generally, players in contract years perform better than what we normally expect from them. Justin Jefferson is, well, Justin Jefferson. There's not a lot that needs to be said there, other than if he stays healthy, he will probably have another 100-catch, 1,400-yard season with 10-plus touchdowns. Veteran receiver Adam Thielen has quietly missed a good chunk of time over the past few years, and we say quietly because unfortunately if you think of a player that gets hurt on the Vikings offense or is injury prone, it's usually the narrative surrounding running back Dalvin Cook, who has never played a fully healthy 17 game season, or even 16 before they changed to 17. But since the start of 2019, out of 49 possible games, Adam has played in 38, and back in 2019, Vikings fans, if you guys remember, he came back extremely early off of a hamstring injury and played only a few snaps against the Chiefs and re-aggravated his injury and was not the same after as he was before, so the 38 is more like 35 area, which is about a third of all games missed. But Adam's presence is most definitely felt when he's on the field, as quietly over the past few years, He's become a touchdown machine, and he is an absolute beast in the red zone, and during 2020 when Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams were destroying team after team to the tune of 18 touchdowns, Thielen quietly had 14 of his own, and Kirk will have all of these guys as receivers and running backs Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison as well. I truly believe this supporting cast is the best he's had, not just from a personnel standpoint, but from a coaching standpoint as well. And I do think having a coach who believes in him and who wants him to succeed, not just to extend his own career, but to actually see him succeed will make a difference and have Kirk play a lot more free and a lot more careless isn't the right word, but willing to take risks 
than he has prior in his career. And I haven't mentioned this yet, but football is not a 7-on-7 seven seven game, and for the first time in a while, the Vikings legitimately look like they have starting tackles for the foreseeable future in Christian Derisaw at left tackle and Brian O'Neill at right tackle. Christian showed a lot of promise in his rookie season last year, and Brian deservedly made the Pro Bowl for the first of a few times in his career. Kirk is a good quarterback and has a good supporting cast around him, and there's no doubt about it. He also has a good schedule in front of him, and there's very few games on the schedule that you chalk up as losses out of the gate. He has an innovative, offensive-minded head coach who believes in him, as well as a team that does and should be better defensively. If everything goes right in 2022 for the Vikings, there's no reason they can't win the division and be competing in the divisional round of the playoffs or even the NFC Championship game, and not to say they're winning it all this year, but 2022 will be the year Kirk changes the narrative, and I can't wait to watch him play. And with that being said, that's all I have for today's video, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, now is the time I ask you to please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, because it would truly mean the world. And until next time, as always, please be safe, and have a great day. Love you guys.